Tesla Model Y Long Range versus Mercedes-Benz EQB 350 4Matic. Both all-wheel drive vehicles, both fully electric. EQB, this one has 221 miles of range. A Tesla Model Y with 20-inch wheels, 318 miles of range. This has a max charging speed of 250 kilowatts. This has a max charging speed of 100 kilowatts. This also has access to the Tesla charging network, but with Tesla opening up their network with the Magic Dock, eventually you'll be able to charge your Mercedes or any other vehicle on the Tesla network, which is great for the adoption of EVs. Now here's where things kind of get shaky for the Mercedes. This model starts at $60,000, which is more expensive by $5,000 than the long range Model Y. You can actually get a performance Model Y, which does zero to 60 in three and a half seconds and has 400 some horsepower for less then you can get this top of the line Mercedes. This specific one costs $70,000 with all of the options it has. So it has the AMG Sport package on the exterior with upgraded 19 inch wheels. The Tesla has the upgraded 20 inch wheels. I have aftermarket wheels on it. So I'm just talking like it is the standard wheel that's on the car. But let's talk about the practicality of these. Now, I did a video where I drove the EQB. So if you wanna see that, it's linked in the description and will be linked at the end of this video as well. The ride quality and sound quality of the Mercedes is better. Overall, the car is built better. It's a little more nip-tuck. The lines are all even all around the car. You can be confident when you get a Mercedes that everything is going to be tight, all the proportions are gonna be good, and they know how to build a car. But as far as the stuff that you can't see, the technology and the battery and all of that, and I guess you can see some of it that's under this hood, whereas Tesla has it so compact and packaged tightly, these other manufacturers are still catching up. Now, with that said, with other cars that I've driven, I feel like Tesla's range never quite get to what's advertised, whereas other cars, Porsche Taycan I had this experience with, the Kona EV, I didn't get to drive this enough to see if actual range is consistent with what's advertised, but I would assume this is probably getting more range by a little bit than what is advertised. So at significantly less range than the Tesla, that's at least what it says on paper. I haven't been able to test that in person. So as far as usability goes, Model Y is much more useful. It has a little bit more space on the interior, has the frunk storage, has the sub compartment. And the interior of the Mercedes, these seats, these AMG Sport seats, these are gonna last forever. Mercedes seats are so durable. With that said, this Model Y has 50, almost 55,000 miles, and these seats also look excellent. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but you can see that the seat is actually split color right now, and that's because I did a cleaning comparison with the Hydrosilex products that I have. There's that Jeebs bundle that they have. There's only a few of them left, and there's a golden ticket in one of the bundle packages. If you order the bundle and you get the golden ticket in yours, you will get Hydrosilex's entire lineup of the 16 ounce bottle. So good luck to whoever wins that. There's not many of them left online. It's probably going to sell out soon. Link in description, code Jeebs April will save you 25% on Hydrosilex's site. They've been an awesome partner to the channel. So on the interior of the Tesla, you can see that these seats, these are probably slightly more comfortable, both very comfortable seats and both highly durable. Also, if you're wondering, this carbon fiber dash here is from Fusion Motorsports. I'll have a link to that in the description as well, along with a $50 off coupon as well. So that's been a really nice upgrade to the car. Moving around to the rear of the car, the comfort of the rear seat here is slightly better. And I've never said this before, but the seating position in the rear of the Tesla is much better than that of the EQB. The EQB, you sit up really high and you're like looking down into the front seat. So I found that kind of weird. The other thing is the EQB does have the display that is directly in front of you. A lot of people are intimidated by the fact that the Model 3 and Y don't have anything in front of you directly, whereas the EQB does have that. And there's a lot of people out there, you may be saying, oh, well, why would you buy a Mercedes over the Tesla? Tesla's been building EVs for 10 years. There's a lot of people that are just brand loyal. They don't want to own a Tesla, just like someone doesn't want to own a Subaru or doesn't want to own a BMW because they like Mercedes. So Mercedes is now in the electric game and people who want to drive an electric vehicle, but from their preferred brand now have more options on it. So don't be like, oh, you have to get a Tesla. Tesla's the best. 
Look, there's other options out there and a Tesla isn't for everyone. This is a nice package and driving the car, the suspension is very nice. It's very quiet. The sound system is nice. It's familiar in here. You, if you don't want to have to learn about the, the Tesla display, which is, it's not very hard to be honest with you, but some people don't want to learn. They're, in, they're stuck in their ways and I don't want to get in their way because they're stuck in their way. The interior of this is familiar. It's like a gas car, but it has the displays and options showing consumption for owning an electric vehicle. The number one issue that I always had against buying something other than a Tesla is the charging network. The public charging network is so bad. So you need to have a good charger at your house because if you're just running around doing errands in town, this is gonna be a great car because EVs compared to gas cars have virtually no maintenance. So it's really nice. It's just everything is put together very nicely in here. You even have this panoramic roof and then you have the automatic retractable sunshade that kind of covers it up. And the amount of heat that comes through here that that's blocking out is incredible. In my Model Y, one of the complaints is in the summer, the heat, like the air conditioning feels like it never catches up because this bar right here is very thin in the Model Y and your head just gets baked and the AC is overworking. Whereas in here, sun's out, I can block it. And I really like that feature. And this is where Tesla lacks in some of their luxury. Tesla wants to make, oh, no part is the best part and Elon is my king. And that's all fine, but there's some features that they need to add to these cars that a lot of people want that the competition has. And as crazy as it sounds, something as simple as that, Tesla will lose business because of things like that. The VW ID4 has it uh, in other cars. So I think it's something that they should look into. But the interiors are just very different. It's total simplicity and then the luxuriousness of a Mercedes Benz. So I don't know, you guys will have to let me know what you think. If you wanna see the solo review of the Mercedes EQB, click this video right here. That's a good one to watch. I hope you enjoy it.